Welcome, Welcome to, to Movie, Movie Bitches. Bitches. Episode 253. Today we're reviewing Cruella. First things first, shout out to our Patreons. $5 a month gets you early access. $10 gets you access to our viewing parties. Second things second, shout out to our wine sponsor, Wink. Go to trywink.com slash moviebitches. You get $22 off your first month of wine. Third things third, make sure to subscribe, share, whole. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter and tell everyone, follow Movie Bitches. Click the little thumbs up button, all that good stuff. Also, I am wearing uh, our Crafty Bitch shirt uh, because, you know, they're crafty and they're making clothes and stuff. I thought that was appropriate. And they are bitch house. They are, yeah. <laughs> um, and I see you have and your gown. Obviously wearing my gown shirt for obvious reasons. Obvious reasons. Both of which are available at moviebitches.threadless.com. So... Cruella. I was pleasantly surprised by this movie. Because we did we do a trailer reaction? Yes. Okay. I love that I couldn't even remember. We we reacted and I was like, Emma Stone, this looks like it's not going to be campy or fun or like anything that I want it to be. Like, you know, Glenn Close set the bar too high. I mean, I don't, yet, think, I don't think Emma Stone reached the, the heights of Glenn Close. But no, Emma Stone <laughs> certainly didn't. But Emma Thompson. So many Emma. I would say did. <laughs> I think Glenn is still above. But uh, I think what happened for me is uh, this got a little bit hyped. And mm. I liked it. That was kind of where I landed. It's I was not like, a perfect film. Sure. It's no. far too long. Far too it's long. It's multiple different movies. A lot of different um, movies that I've already seen. Can we actually really, the thing that's been bothering me the most, uh -huh. can we please talk about how a good third of this movie is just a plot line from an episode of Emily in Paris? <laughs> right? Yes. This movie is, I mean, it starts and it's a like Dickensian um, street drama, you know, without Fagin. Then it's The Devil Wears Prada. Then Wait. it's... That episode of Emily in Paris. <laughs> then it's Ocean's Eleven. Um, and then right. it's just sort of like a revenge plot of sorts. Right. Like a, uh, I outsmarted you. Ha you ha. Know, You're ha -ha. evil. And now everyone knows. Yeah. I think the thing that I disliked the most was the soundtrack. Because Jesus yeah. Christ, it wouldn't let you figure it out. It was like, we don't trust the audience to understand tone. Here's another, I mean, they must have paid millions of dollars for this soundtrack, millions. I counted at yeah. the end. There was yeah. 35 pop songs played throughout the movie, wow. which means there was a new song at least every four minutes. It, it was, that was my biggest complaint. It was so overscored. Oh. Like it was just the the soundtrack was jam packed and real and obvious. And it was also it was very, very obvious. obvious, very on the nose. Oh, she's and being almost kind lazy. of lazy. It was so lazy. Oh, she's being kind of sassy. Let's play these boots are made for walking. Okay, great. Here yeah. we are. This is yeah. what we're doing. It was just like let's find the most obvious temp song we could put in if yeah. we hoped to get the money to pay for the licensing. Oh, we got all of the money in the world. Let's just leave all the obvious temp tracks in oh my god this was wild at the end they play sympathy for the devil um and it was crazy because i just watched fear and loathing in las vegas oh. which is fucking fantastic has one of the best soundtracks amazing but i was reading about it and they historically hunter s thompson was listening to sympathy for the devil when he was writing this certain thing and they tried to get the rights to it but they couldn't afford it and so they had to use something else. To, and I was like... To just toss it at the end. You're like, I was, oh, course. and here it is. Go for it. Oh, man. That really... That was wild to me. <laughs> and not even like that was the big get. You know what I mean? It was like, like oh, ooh, cool. we really this saved another, our... Pinched yeah. our pennies so we could get right. sympathy for the devil nope. at the end. Didn't, <laughs> I didn't was matter. just like, wow. So anyway, that drove me fucking nuts. And it made the movie yes. even more whiplashy, like tonally, yes. like what? Yes, oh, now we're here. Absolutely. Oh, now we're playing perhaps, perhaps, perhaps. Like I was surprised they didn't play Girl from Ipanema. You know, it was just like, let's oh, pick sure. every obvious choice we can. That was my Girl biggest gripe. 
you know, oh, they're in an elevator and we're playing Muzak of Girl from Ipanema. <laughs> you know, it's like, right. okay. Actually, this would have been a better choice if they had done Eartha Kitt, I want to be evil. Evil. That oh, would have I been, that you know, more, less, l a little less, a little less on the nose. I I think it would have been fully on the nose, but I think it would have been fabulously on the nose. It's, so. But it certainly would have been more budgetarily sure. fiscally sound. I will say, too, the other thing that frustrated me the most about this movie was the cinematography, we'll call it. Oof. Um, and these oneers. These, these nauseating um, oneers. That were nauseating, but also... The pacing of them was well. They were at like uneven. two and a half speed of what you would want. But not always. High. But not always. It was like, <laughs> oh, now we're moving slow. Oh, we got to move it up faster. Oh, now we're moving slow again. And you're like, well, wh why? Why are we doing this? Yeah. But then it almost felt like they were doing it to match the music. Probably. And I was like, this is insanity. They were like there ramping was one it. Part, there was a Nina Simone song. Feeling good, right? Wasn't it? Yes. Bum, I think that bottom and I'm feeling good but it, was, it took so long to get into yeah. that you're just like this slow shot and I'm like what the fuck are you telling us this is just shoe leather why are we doing like it's shoe leather <laughs> of the camera there's yeah. not even anyone wa like there's no one ha nothing's happening it drove me crazy. Be crazy I think <laughs> that this movie was perhaps better than it had any right to be but I didn't really love it it was parts yes. I loved Emma Thompson's there. She's wearing fucking turban after turban. I was obsessed with it. Her outfits. I mean, the outfits we could talk about for days. She's got like a Devo hat wig on at some point. And I was like, yes, yes, this is yeah. what I want. The headline is certainly the fashion. Hands down, that's the draw. You yeah. know, I was, and I wasn't expecting that necessarily from what we saw in the trailer or whatever. Because like, obviously not. the Glenn Close one was like, you know, iconic for the costumes. The storyline was fashion, and I wasn't really expecting that. And I thought it was really fun. In some ways, it reminded me of Freak Show. You remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In like the like, ooh, I'm like the little oddball kid who doesn't fit in with like the boring kids at school, and right. like I'm fabulous and fun, and now I have room to roam free and be magnificent. It was yes. that kind of vibe. I did and not love the character development or lack thereof she was just like i'm great at fashion i know how to sew Shh. we never saw any any of it it was a lot of nature versus nurture um of like well right is, of like is oh she's psychoticness you know catching you know through the jeans it was a lot of that um yeah i just felt we like did see her learn to sew with the mom like the oh. Oh, a little bit. The fake a mom. Bit. That's not the pattern. You have to follow the pattern. There's a way of doing things. I, I get what you're saying. I mean, obviously, for a movie that's two hours and 15 minutes, you'd think there would have been time. But they had to have those wanners. So that they had to, 48 minutes. You know, spend um, more time with those two knuckleheads. They had to have that weird music concert. Oh, I love the music concert. I was like, I can't see the fashion. Suddenly, all well, of my friends um, play instruments. There was no, okay. Well, right. Like, it was just like, what's this? And the song was bad. I want to be a dog. Oh, I didn't mind what the was song. it? I want to be a dog. It was like, now I wanna be a dog. feeling like a dog or, or something. It was supposed to be like, I'm, you know, I'm punk and badass. And also, oh, is she wearing Dalmatian for real? That was the, that was the, the you know, I liked it. I sure. think that was, oh, I'm not letting you. There I'm was just one. stuff that I was like, I would have preferred more character development personally because I wasn't attached to either of the Emmas emotionally. Well, you're certainly like, not supposed to be stop. attached to Emma Thompson emotionally. I mean, she's obviously. just evil. Yeah. And that was it. And I was like, on yeah. some level, I'm excited about this, but also that was it. There was right. zero vulnerability. And I was just like, okay. Um, well, and, <laughs> she's just and zero fully a, a sociopath, yeah. like psychotic. Right. She tries to murder Narcissist. her own child three times. Unsuccessfully. She, in this Disney film, tries to murder her own child <laughs> three separate times. <laughs> wow. Bold. Yes. I will say, like, in terms of the two friends, right? Like... They were clearly setting, the, this movie is supposed to set it up so that basically 101 Dalmatians is a publicity stunt for this character later on. 
Huh? So, like, the idea is that basically at the end of this movie, right, she right, gives right. them the two dog, the, the Dalmatians yeah. to Roger and Anita. And then it's like, that's the setup for 101 Dalmatians. But what we're supposed to have gleaned from the rest of this was that she's not actually going to murder all of the puppies. She just wants everyone to think that she's going to. Did she actually wear a Dalmatian she's coat like repeating- or was it fake? Really? That's what we're to... I thought we were to glean from it that she hated Dalmatians because, spoiler alert, they pushed her mother off a cliff. (laughs) Oh my God. When that scene happened, I I was in a theater and I just go, what? (laughs) That was so wild. So I thought that she decided that Dalmatians were evil somehow and that's why she hates them so much. Right, they walk that back because they were like, then oh, she like mind. trains them and, and whatever and she loves dogs, right? That was the thing, was that she was actually a dog person. But like that makes she... no sense with the future Cruella. Like the, the the weird thing for me was the Cruella we know is just the Baroness, is Emma Thompson. Right. So it's sort right. of like you're watching this going, am I rooting for her to become this soulless, evil person that I know she becomes? Right. It was a strange place to be. I was just like, why do I care then? I get that. I think what they were trying to do was to re- rewrite it, essentially, so that she's not actually the Baroness and evil. She's just putting that on as a persona. See, I don't like that. I'd rather her just be a fucking evil bitch. Just be a villain. Just be. let her be a villain. But that makes this movie a lot harder than to... Like, then you yeah, can't well, I mean, I don't know if this movie was necessary... Ultimately, it wasn't necessary, you know but I, mean? I see. I still had a lot of fun with it. I thought it was a lot of fun acting. It was a lot of silliness. It was a fun family movie that didn't feel like a stupid kids movie to me. No, and but I are... do. I do think that kids would be very bored by this film. Like I don't think. I don't think so. Kids would like this much. I disagree. I think they would. Really? I think there was yeah. There was enough stuff in it where I kept being like. This is kind of, oh, that's for the kids. I was like, this is dumb. Oh, that's when for the kids. she tried to burn her daughter alive with dogs in the building. That was, I mean, it was like pretty fucked. When it turned out that like 45 minutes of the movie were dedicated to stealing a necklace, I was like, wow. And yeah. it turns out that the dog, one of the Dalmatians eats the necklace that it has a right. very long chain. And one of the plot points is let's wait till it shits. And I was like, that dog is dead. There's no way that chain is passing. I'm sorry. I was like, you need to take that dog to the vet. There is no way in my mind. And so, but what was so weird to me was that we're waiting, we're waiting. I don't know, three weeks have gone by and the dog still hasn't shat. I was like, take it to the vet. Then we never see it concluded. And Mark Strong is just like, oh, when I saved you from the fire, I found it. Yeah. Don't worry. I bleached it. Oh. What? Okay, well, then that plot didn't matter at all, really. Could have just had the necklace. Hey, I did it. I got it. Well, I guess she needed it to open the box? But she didn't know it was a key. Like, that plot of the dog eating it, get rid of it. Right. Throw it away. Who gives a shit? Oh, they kidnapped the dogs because they're trying to fuck with Emma Thompson. And they have the necklace. Like, it just was, like, overly complicated. And all this stuff with Anita was like, why is she in the movie? So we can have one button on the end to be like, she got the dog. But, like, she was so unnecessary to the plot. Well, I mean... I mean, she disappeared for 45 minutes when we were going through the Oliver Twist from section. From kid to adult, you mean? But, I mean, she was just gone. Like, I, I was like, why was she in this movie? And then she showed up to kind of be the reporter, but it didn't really matter. I think it mattered to some extent that it was, like, having the coverage helped give her the power to, to you know, make it a story. And, therefore, then sure. she, could, she could rival... The, the Duchess, the Countess, I think the, the Baroness. Ba- the Baroness. The I think they needed to give less screen time to the two bumbling friends and more to Anita then. But those are for kids. Sure. Wasn't it strange that the whole arc of those two bumbling guys was, we don't like you anymore. You're a bitch. And then at the end they were like, oh well, we'll just be your, your bumbling well, idiots. I mean, yes. Well, that's the other thing. Like, again, it's like they had to try and work it into, well, this is where we end up, where she's this evil villain with two bumbling idiots that serve her unquestionably. And I think what they were trying to do was to be like, she went too crazy, she went too intense, and was a bitch to them. And they were like, fuck you then. And then their family and whatever, and she was like, oh, she played the family card and whatever, fine, we'll help you. 
And she's also seemingly less of a bitch all of a sudden now after nearly dying for the fourth time. I, you know, um, I'm not saying it's perfect. No, I know, I, just, I know, I know. I thought it was a lot of fun. And especially, like, I rewatched the Glenn Close one fairly recently. And it's bad. Yeah, it's oh, a yeah. bad movie. Like, she's amazing. And, the like, her outfits are everything. But, like, the rest of it's a stupid kids movie where most of it is, like, talking dogs, you know? And Wait, so, did the dogs, like, actually talk? I don't even remember. They have voices. But is it, like, Homeward Bound style? Or is it, like, Cats and Dogs style? Where they're like, bah, 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 bah. I, I'm trying to remember. I think it was Homeward Bound style. Where okay, they're I like that. talking I like that dogs. better. Yeah, oh, just, my God. You know, oh, and the oh. voiceover. Oh, boy. Well, because her to be, accent work. I wanted to we, be... We didn't um, talk about that. Brian Cox in adaptation. <laughs> no more voiceover! God help you if you use voiceover in your work, my friends. It's flaccid, sloppy writing. Any idiot can write voiceover narration to explain the thoughts of a character. I did love her magical um, hat as a child that, that always just perfectly covered the white half of her hair. Yeah. Nailed it. Done. It was yes. just always Great. like, psh. Ah. Blue. <laughs> <laughs> well, and the fact that she's born with half black, half white hair. Was she really? Yes. They showed her. That was the whole thing. That was why oh. they kept being like, oh, is that natural or I, what's going on? I missed that. I thought she like decided to do it no. as a kid because she was bored. See, that's why I was kind of bummed about the character development. I think that would have been a much better choice that she was like, fuck this. I'm punk rock. I'm dying my hair half black, half white. But I fully instead, thought that's what she did. No, she literally came out half white, half black hair and I... At first I laughed because I thought, well, that's hilarious. Um, but then as a character thing, I was like, oh, well, and what does that have to do with anything? And what, that wouldn't happen. I guess that's just Cruella, right? I you know, know, I was just sort of like, oh, Is it okay. supposed to be like she's half good, half evil? Yes. She was born that way. It's a little... Yeah. Just, I would have preferred yeah. it if it was like, if she showed up and they were like, oh, Estella! What did you do to That's your hair? That's what I thought it was. Yeah. I was like, she's like, oh, I'm going to go to school and guess what, bitch? Ha! I dyed my hair half and half, you know? It was tough because the voiceover was just, I'm a genius. But then they never like showed it. It was just like, I'm fantastic. I'm a genius. As like a child, which on some level is funny and fun. But then I wanted to see it um, come to fruition more or something. I don't know. I guess that's true. As a kid, we don't really see much of the genius. She just it's talks It's only about when it. she's designing fashion later that you're like, right. oh, yes, bench, work. These are awesome. I, I mean, mean, we yeah. didn't talk about, I think the most gag-worthy moment was the fucking moth dress. Oh my God, yes. I thought you were going to say when she set herself on fire and I was like, that was wild. Um, I mean, it was wild, but I like kind of loved that too. Like in the trailer, I was like, this is stupid. And then when it happened, I was like, oh yes, bitch. Because like the whole black and white ball, she's like, fuck you, it's red. I love it. I loved that. I did think there was, like, this was another scene where I was just like, why is this still happening? Like, so the whole conceit yeah. is that Emma Thompson will throw anyone out of her parties that's old or outshining her or anyone that's causing her to not be in the Not spotlight. fitting the, the brief of the costume or whatever. Yeah, and then there was just this really long scene where everyone is standing around watching as these security guards ass assault her and try to, like, kick her out of the party. And she's like jokey joking and I'm just like what's going on like this is yeah. madness what's happening madness yeah yeah <laughs> like, and well, then she's like beating on? them up with a cane and yeah. you're like what's happening here like okay this is a lot of got... violence for a, a socialite party you'd think that she would be like take her in the back like we want we don't want the like everyone's right. just standing around as they have like a quippy quip fight scene and I was just like what is this like totally what is going on I think that's the kids' movie aspect. Of I it. guess so. I guess so. I did you know. really think it was funny that nobody recognized her. I wish they'd almost leaned in even more. Like because Emma Thompson is so narcissistic, that's why she was just like. Well, it was. You seem facially... vaguely familiar. And even yeah, right. They, like they worked together for the past however long. But like, I everybody, that was what it was. like everybody, well. had facial blindness, so it just made me laugh. And they kept having all those sure. newspaper articles being like, "The police are stumped." And then right next to that scene, they were like, We need to sue her. Having been through the statute and talked to the police, I don't know we have a legal avenue. Well, we don't have anything to convict her on, so... And I was like, why are they after her? 
Then well, what? well, sure. The police are stumped from these people that were driving away in a garbage truck after they dumped. Like, she's wearing, oh my God, that train, <gasps> that dress. I mean, that digital dress, but yes! I mean, <laughs> When it when it first came out, it wasn't, and then you know. Ah, yes. there was fabulous fashion. She becomes yeah. this Vivian Westwood sort of punk. Yeah. Uh, it was the plot of that Emily in Paris episode, which made me laugh quite a bit. It was the same exact thing, and I was it like, really "This is crazy to me." Really, really made me laugh. But I still really enjoyed all of that, and like every yeah. different thing that she did, I was like, "Yes, work." These reveals when she's walking on top of the car with it, like fucking belted oh, yeah. and prisonered. It was like, this is great. There was a lot of little details, like um, Emma Thompson's main secretary looks exactly like Yves Saint Laurent in the 70s. Like, he's got the hair and the sunglasses, you know? Or not the sunglasses, but the glasses. And like, yeah. um, There's fun details there. I loved the thrift store and art, even though, yes. you know, that kind of fell to the wayside. I was like, no, come back. I, I right. like that you were here, but also we didn't need another character. Well, I guess they needed someone to help her make all the, the outfits was basically what they wanted. Oh boy. Well then when it became the ending of Three Amigos, when they make all of the Cruellas, and so I was like, oh yeah. boy. Oh, sure. Oh boy. Oh my God. <laughs> I mean, I, I was like, it was, it was silly. Who made all these wigs? I want to know. Let me know. James Mansfield. Yes. <laughs> they could have done more, I think, that she like has split personality, essentially. Right, that she was repressing Cruella. You know, uh, the yeah. true me is Corella, but I'm not Estella anymore. But she really does have like a psychotic break where she's just like, and now I am Cruella. And I was like, right. yes. I mean, but maybe we do this in an even more interesting way or something where she's actually having like a psychosis, you know, issue or something like that. I don't know. That could have been an interesting thing for those two bumbling idiots to be like, oh, sometimes you're so, you know, and she's trying to right. balance the good and the evil. Uh, it could have been interesting, perhaps. Really? I felt like it was a very fine line that they were trying to walk and that yeah. could have easily gone, like, not well. Um, yeah, I mean, I didn't need it to become, you know, a joke, but I just thought right. a little bit more of, and it could have just been that she's trying to emulate or be someone else or change her, change herself to, to be more Cruella. Because there was sort of this overtone of like, oh, only women who are bitches get stuff done. There was like a little right. bit of like a, you can't be successful if you're nice as a woman. If, and I was like, eh. Right. Not obsessed yeah. with this. I think what they could have done, obviously so much time could have been trimmed, but also they could have spent a little bit more time on her working under the Baroness and getting to know her more and yeah. emulating her. You know, it's like when you fall into the wrong friend group yeah. and it's like, you know, ooh, you're spending too much time with them. Those aren't good. Those aren't good people to be with. Like you're becoming a nasty little bitch. You know, that like... That's real, and especially yes. like if she was if she was growing up basically especially with just these two guys. If she was orphaned as a, how old do we think she was? Twelve? Seven? Oh. Okay. I this is what this is the point I was gonna make. This made me laugh so hard. They're all children, fully right. children. Before I knew it, ten years had passed. Ten years passed, and I was like, "What? You guys all look at least thirty-five to forty. What is going on?" <laughs> Right. Ten Fair. years passed, we lived on the street, and I was like, what? <laughs> it really got me. That's that's true. Particularly that's the two like guys, I was like, yeah, um, they're thirty three. Ten years, you say? Huh? I guess they were a little older than her, but still, they would be what twenty two, not thirty two. But yes, she didn't have like a, a you know, father figure. She didn't have a mother figure. Uh, for a while, you know, because she her mother right. died when she was so young. She gets kind of wrapped up in it all or something. I think it's yeah. hard with Disney trying to make a villain plotline because you have to sort of endear them or... Yes. This whole movie felt like it really wanted to be let off its leash, you know, for lack of a, a subtler metaphor. Um, but, like, there was a moment when Emma Thompson was like, oh, that... And you could tell, like, there was a take where she said bitch, and they were like, we can't do it. Right. Can't 
can't yeah. do it. You know, and I just wanted it to have a little more. It's like, oh, it's okay if she's tried to murder her child three times, but we can't possibly say bitch. Absolutely not. You know, there's like a weirdness there where it's Disney and you're like, okay. Yeah, yes. I fully get that. It's one of those movies where I went in and I had a great time. And obviously for me, it was like, you know, back in theaters, how exciting and whatever. And like El, El Capitan, it was like a whole experience. Yeah. You know? So that, for me, certainly colored my experience. Like, I was in a great mood. But I did have a lot of fun with it. And, like, I was super enjoying the fashion. I wasn't expecting to necessarily enjoy it at all, even, mm, from the right. trailer going into it. More than a lot of stuff, this has had a lot more heart than a lot of movies that we've seen. Like, there was, there was care taken. Someone was super invested. Was it, was it completely successful? Not at all. But, like, someone was really invested in trying to make it fabulous. Right. And I think the fabulosity was there. The filmmaking, not as much. It seemed like it had you a know, lot of hands in the cookie jar to me. Well, that's Disney. Yeah, exactly. I was hearing, I didn't realize this, which is really quite depressing if this is the future of film. Apparently, Disney is now basically requiring all of their movies. It's like storyboarding to the nth degree, where... They don't just like storyboard it. They CGI the entire film with like they, they map out every shot and everything and they plan out the entire and edit the entire movie before they shoot it. I mean, that sounds like, you know, Pixar or something like that makes sense for an animation. But I don't know. That's wild. Well, basically, it saves them so much time on. Well, I mean, that's you only what, shoot what you um, need. But like, that's what that's, that's what Hitch, that's what Hitchcock did. I mean, Hitchcock literally storyboarded every movie and then he said he would always say like "Ugh, now i have to go shoot the thing i've already <sighs> you know that was like that was the hard part right? it in his, in it's his like brain, i already yeah. it's already gonna be great i already know but now i have to go actually do it but not everyone's hitchcock you know and so sure. well we didn't talk so craig gillespie directed this who also did right. i tanya and lars and the real girl <laughs> Which I both, I liked both of I love, movies. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, like, I could tell he wanted to make this grittier, yeah. and it was just like, Ugh, yeah. it's not quite, you know, there. It was certainly not terrible, and it certainly was more inventive and different than I thought it would be. I think it was interesting and fun. It appealed to a lot of audiences in a way that, like, honestly, the first live action didn't. Like, looking back at that movie now, that is fully just a kid's movie. But I do remember, like, loving that movie as a child. Oh, yeah. But as so a I child. Would just be, I would just be interested if kids liked this. I don't know. Sure. I feel like they will, but also that's because kids are more grown up these days. I suppose, the internet. yes. It took uh, the pacing. It took a real long time for stuff to happen. Yeah. A real long time. Honestly, that was the biggest problem for me. The pace. This movie, no Disney movie should be over two hours. What are we doing? No. 90. 90 minutes. No kid is going to want to sit through it that long. They're going to get an antsy. That was the biggest problem. And it was five different movies in one. They could have simplified it and cut half an hour. Oh my God, so many things. I was just like, what? Now we're doing this? What? Now we're doing this? What? Oh, yeah. we have more CGI dogs running around pulling capers. I don't know. I was like, why are they CGI'd? Just let well, them be dogs. I mean, it was interesting. There was a mixture of dogs. It was a combo. Like, yeah. I saw photos from the set of like real dogs, but it was obvious that there was a lot of CGI and it looked bad. Oh my God, can we talk about the end scene when she's... Like they're at the cliffs, and it's just like fully the oh. set of the set of Revenge, oh. where it's just like the fake CGI oh, yeah. ocean. Yes. Well, and her her parachute skirt. I mean, that was. Oh my god. I was like, um, and it now like, she's James Bond. I was like, yes. It's like Barb and Star in their culottes. Yes. I was like, what's this? <laughs> this is wild. So much familicide, oh. um, but it is Disney, oh so you know what are you gonna do? That well, makes, exactly. That tracks. That tracks. The pro the CGI on that for me really ruined her entire monologue because I was so distracted by how oh, shitty yeah. it looked. Everything looked so bad. I was like, what happened? Well, they spent too much money on Sympathy for the Devil. Um, oh my god! They honestly. ran out. I mean, that's the soundtrack was yeah pacing insane. soundtrack worst like, bits. I don't even, like, I can't remember the last, I guess, Watchmen, but that was all in the book. Like, they managed to get all the songs that they mentioned in the Reference, actual comic. Yeah. 
this was wild. Speaking of Hitchcock, so there's that scene in, um, she's in like a hotel or something. She's watching an old movie on the, on the TV. It was very brief, but they show okay. a scene of Tallulah Bankhead and I was like, yes! And it's from Lifeboat. And Tallulah Bankhead is who they based the cartoon of Cruella de Vil on oh. with her overly exaggerated movements and her wickedness or whatever. And that just made me go, oh, I just wish they'd let her be evil and have Anita sure. be the the lightness or whatever, if you have to do that. I just felt like I kept wanting to be like, just be evil. Right. <laughs> Go well, for I, it. I mean, I would have much preferred, rather than the plot line be like, oh, is that nature or nurture, right? And she, is the evil from the Baroness like passed on through her, through the womb. I would have much preferred it be that she just is like, as she's working under her, forget the heist pl plot line of getting oh, the boy. necklace, right? Because that was just necklace. so stupid. Like, the, exactly. the fact that we needed... The, the clue that her hair was black and white when she was born and that we needed the necklace and that we needed Mark Strong to show up to be like, I whisked you away and here's a necklace with a key and a box right. with a birth certificate. I was like, no, this is way too much. Way, way too, too much. much. No, I think it would have been so much more simplified if it was just that as she's working under her, she's really a a idolizing her. Oh, she starts treating her friends the same way of like, oh, yeah. did I slash you? Oops. <laughs> Ooh, I That's like that all. blood color. Yeah, you know, exactly. <laughs> oh, she's become more and more evil, and then she's hungry for it. And she just loses her way, and then yeah. Cruella becomes the Baroness times two, and that's how she became crazy. And I think just simplify, you know, have art work at the atelier. Be the Stanley Tucci. Uh, sure, whatever. You know what I mean? Like, Or she gets him a job simplify. there, or whatever. Or she gets yeah. a job. She was working at the thrift store, because that's her only sure. link to fashion at first, but then she something it was just so sort of disjointed in how many plots were going on and then by the end this like ham-fisted like roger and anita you know uh, scene at the end i was just like wow they really really tried to <laughs> they really well they were it. really trying hard to figure out a way that they could make her not a villain and have it still fit in the canon of 101 dalmatians they really they really did that dance that means that pongo and Purdy. The Purdy are siblings. Are they? Well, weren't they the offspring of the Dalmatian? At some point, she's like, oh, so-and-so's looking big or something. She looks pregnant. Oh. There was like a throwaway oh. line where one there of the was three like Dalmatians was... There was like a throwaway line of like, was, oh, they're, are they putting on weight or something? And I was like, why? I thought it had to do with the necklace. Say. Like, she was so constipated. Me too. Or and something or whatever. But I mean, where oh, else well, would those puppies really have really throws come a from, problem into it right? because if they're related, then they shouldn't be having a hundred. Well, I guess the yeah. hundred and one wasn't actually right. their own. They had like sixteen, but still, they do have dogs. They have but puppies I mean, together. Where else would those pu dogs have come from if they weren't babies of that Dalmatian, right? From the same. Well, they could have come from somewhere else. No, I, I think thought. That's, see, I think that's they were it setting it up to me like she was this, you know, semi evil genius. Where it was like, oh, she's always planning five, you know, steps ahead. So now her next thing is like, oh, I'm gonna give them these dogs, and then I can be like, oh, I'm gonna, you know, look at me. I'm gonna make wow. a, a, a coat out of Dalmatians. I don't know. That's it's not so dumb. Out enough. If it's that's not the plot, that she's like, it was all a publicity stunt and a long con to, to like, fake people into thinking, no, that's dumb. That's a dumb motivation. If that's what that was. <laughs> So, I mean, obviously, differing opinions. I had a lot of fun. Uh, was, and I loved look, the fashion. And I loved it. There was Emma a lot of fun. Emma Thompson was playing it up. She had turbans. There was gowns. I loved the costume changes. I just kept, my brain kept going, what? No. Sure. Huh? No. And so by the end, I was like, I'm annoyed. This is too complicated. Simplify this. Strip it down. It is too complicated. Yeah. It's also um, one I think that you just can't think about too much. I think you no. have to go. It was a popcorn movie. You had a yes. fun time. Yes. And then you left. And it was like, yeah. ooh, the fashion. I want to go into fashion now. It's very that, you know? It was just so crazy that it was just so many different movies that had already existed. That was what was also wild. But I found that's that probably was... why I was bored. Because I was like, well, this is just Devil Wars Prada. Well, this is right. just Ocean's Eleven. Well, this is just right. you know, Oliver Twist for a while. This is just Emily in Paris. This is just Emily. Wow. Wow. Can you imagine if Lily Collins was Cruella? No. Can you Awful. imagine? No. Ah, you know what? I just solved it. 
Because I thought Emma Stone was good, but not fantastic. Elizabeth Debicki as Cruella. Oh my God, yes. Oh my God, yes. Yes. Nailed it. Give them another $200 million to do <laughs> Cruella 2, where now she's Elizabeth Debicki. I love it. They are doing great. Cruella 2. Oh boy. They, of course they, they already did it because it did well. So they said, okay, great. We're going to do Cruella 2. And I'm like, are you? Is that a good idea? How are they going to bring... Oh, no, I was going to say, how are they going to bring back Emma Thompson? But now it'll be that she's in jail and she's revenging Cruella. And it'll just be a oh series boy. of revenges. Revenge. Even more so than not really having a development of Cruella, Emma Thompson's Baroness was, was just evil. Oh. Yeah. I, I mean, I was surprised that they allowed, you know, she's like a female character who gets pregnant and is just vocally like, I don't want a child. I am too right. narcissistic. I was like, okay, Disney. All right. Okay. Get rid of it. What? Evil stepmother, you know, I suppose. Uh, not sure. stepmother, but you know. Or what I mean. mother, mother, but yeah. Um, but Although that archetype. It's usually an know. evil stepmother and not yeah. a mother. Yeah. They, I was shocked that they allowed a mother in a major movie to admit, I don't want children. That was shocking. Sure. I was like, wow. Sure. Yeah. But she was just evil. Like, it was just like, she's evil. There wasn't even much of a personality there aside from, no. you know, power Turbans. and fashion. Although not even fashion, it seemed like, did she ever, she used to design her gowns and now other people do? Or was it yeah. always just that she pretended to design them and it well, was and, just that she was rich enough that she could make other people do it. And was it happenstance that Cruella also loved fashion? Like, was that genealogically passed down? There was just a was lot it of, because like... because of her other mother, like, the fake mother kind of when introduced they, it to they, her? Well, because they said at some point Emma Thompson was like, oh, that was, that necklace belonged, or that woman that got thrown off a cliff worked for me, right? And so I assumed right. she was doing Emma, Tom Emma Stone's job. Oh, right. I'm sketching and I'm a right, fashion no, person. She was, she was like dressed a like a maid. And I was like, oh, okay. Maybe she had aspirations yeah. to be, but we never saw that. Maybe more flashbacks between the mom and her something. Sure. Something. Yeah. But anyway. We definitely could have used a restructure and trimmed a lot. <laughs> But yeah. for the most part, I still found it to be a fun little ride. A pleasant surprise. And, you know, Emma Thompson. What can I say? Emma Thompson. Oh, my God. Can't say that. Emma, Emma Thompson. Cheers. <laughs>